Oh my god. Honestly, this is so unbearable. I swear if I see one more cheater. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. Like, how is any one of my servers supposed to have any fun with these little micro sacks cheating all over the place? Honestly, how hard would it be to develop my own anti-cheat? And I mean a really good anti-cheat. Like, you know, the ones that are fully packet-based and async, and of course, lag compensated. Many months later. Well, it only took me four months, but I finally got a solid anti-cheat made. And honestly, I would say the hardest part was dealing with Mojang's incompetence. Just thinking back in those days gave me PTSD. Like seriously, whose idea was it Mojang to not send a block destroy packet when you break a block in a single game tick? Like watch this, if you hit some stone, it's going to say start destroy block and it's going to say stop destroy block. However, if you hit netherrack, it's just going to say start destroy block. It's never going to say stop destroy block because you broke that block in a single game tick due to the efficiency 5. TNT has the same thing, put that down, it's going to say start, never going to say stop. However, if you hit something and then stop, it's going to say abort. So I have no idea why they decided just to neglect to send stop destroy packets every time you break a block in a single game tick. Like why? That's so easy to do. Also, the way Minecraft handles the player's ground state is so dumb because jumping while placing blocks on your feet will always tell the server that you're not and on the ground. And of course the built-in server and achieve will always keep spam with kill reporting you when you walk in and suggest that you're wearing gold and more versions of Minecraft and the other you all always want to pack it through pack actions while the pitch is here. One eternity later. Alright, now that I got that out of my system, let's talk about why an anti-cheat needs to be async slash packet based. Well, one reason is by listing the packets you'll be using the netty threads. There's four by default, and they handle incoming and outgoing packets. In addition to your netty threads, you also have your main thread, which is where all your plugins run, and is also where the server's timer is located at. Normally, Minecraft runs at 20 ticks per second, which means there's a 50 millisecond gap in between each game tick. Now, if there's excess lag, it may take longer to process all the data. This will cause the server's TPS to drop. This means that all my plugins, including my Factions plugin, Custom Enchant plugin, Utilities plugin, and Kits plugin, will all run on the same thread. This, however, is a problem for anti cheats, since we need to run a lot of statistical analysis, retraces, and just general math each time a player sends a new packet. Doing all this would certainly slow down our server, which is why we wanted to spread that loadout over the four netty threads instead. However, doing all this creates a new set of challenges like race conditions and having the netty thread get out of sync with the main thread due to lag. Furthermore, the main thread will always run at least one tick behind our netty threads due to it needing to pre-process the incoming data. This means that I need to store a lot of the data like the player's sprinting state, sneaking state, blocking state, and so on in my anti-cheat in order to be as accurate as possible. To develop my anti-cheat, I use something called Packet Events, which is a plugin that provides pack wrappers and listeners in order to make handling all the that a lot cleaner and easier. If you're interested in checking it out, I'll put their Discord link, download link, and their GitHub link in the description below. Now that we got that out of the way, let's look into the real meat and potatoes of my anti-cheat. Lag compensation. Lag compensation is something that very few anti-cheats use due to its complex nature. However, without it, it makes certain things become impossible. In a nutshell, lag compensation just means that I store a player's chunks in my anti-cheat instead of using the chunks saved on the main thread. This means I can't use any of the normal bucket API and essentially I had to rebuild most of Minecraft's code inside of my anti-cheat. You may be asking why Need to store every player's chunks a second time. Well, the difference is the chunks I store are made to match what the player is seeing on their screen. For example, when a player places a block under their feet, their client will instantly add that block. This means if a player places a block under their feet and jumps on top of it, their position will reflect that change. Since my anti cheat runs on the netty threads, I can't use the main thread's chunk since it will be updated a tick later. This by itself is not too big of a deal because I can always just wait one tick to analyze the player's movement. However, the real trouble arises when you consider other players' world interactions. Now, let's say player A has a thousand millisecond ping. That means it will take them 500 milliseconds to receive a block change packet and 500 milliseconds for the new position packets which reflect that change to be received by the server. This means if player B places a block in front of player A, it will take player A 500 milliseconds to realize there's a block placed in front of them. The issue is if player A is moving forward, any normal anti-cheat that uses the main thread's chunks will see player A walking through a block. This is why many anti-cheats have ping exemptions since laggy players can appear to fly, phase, tower, and speed hack. This is where ping compensation comes in. To fix this we need to make our anti-cheats chunks match what every player is seeing on their screen. I accomplished this by listening for a player's block break and dig packets before adding their changes to a player's chunk since we know those happen instantly. Then whenever a block change packet is sent to the client, I would save that data in an object and send that client a transaction packet. Once I receive that transaction packet, I'll update a player's chunks with that original block change. So if we let player A once again walk forward while player B places a block, we won't trigger my phase checks since I know that client has not received that block location yet. Also as a little side note, most servers built in 
and the cheats will still flag this movement and it will teleport the player back, but at least they won't get false flagged or banned by my anti-cheat anymore. Now before I explain my phase checks, I want to make it clear that most of what I've talked about is vastly oversimplified because explaining everything in depth would take many hours. For example, when a player places a block I needed to determine if that block being placed can go there and if it can, what should its new combined ID be? To do this, I essentially just used trial and error until I got all the blocks worked out. Each block has a block ID, combined ID, and also most blocks have block data. This is because all blocks and block states need to be represented by an integer, since that takes up less memory. Remember, we need to store every block in all loaded chunks for each player inside the anti sheet. And we also need an easy way to send clients packets, which is done using a byte buffer. I may talk about this again later. However, here are the two methods I used to create block data for the doors, where the top method is used when sending a player a block change packet, while the bottom method is used internally. Alright, let's talk about face checks. In order to make a face check, we first need to know where the player's collision box is. To do this, I created an object called surrounding box, whose fields represent the min and max value of a player's x, y, and z, after I expanded or shrink each value. I then had to create a block object, which allowed me to get the info about a typical block that's saved inside my anti-cheats chunks. I then created a new object for every block with unique characteristics, which I could then extend from my original block object. After doing that, I created a collision box for every block object. After a ton of bug fixes, I finally got a system working, which means it's time to create some face checks. I made two phase checks. Phase B just detects if a player's collision box intersects with another block. If you thought this was all you would need, you'd be wrong because hackers can stand on a thin block like glass panes and send position packets that just barely on the other side of the wall. This then would bypass all my speed checks since the distance the player traveled is smaller than the max speed a player could achieve in a single game tick. You can remedy this in multiple ways, however I handled it by making phase A run a ray trace. Every time a player sends a position packet, I run a little ray trace to detect if the player has passed through a solid block. If the player teleported or if they moved at a large enough speed to where my speed checks would catch them, I would not ray trace. Also keep in mind I made a single ticket teleportation exemption system, regardless of a player's ping, so purling and phasing won't bypass either. All that being said, I bet some of you thought of the obvious issue with clipping. Essentially, since Minecraft runs 20 ticks per second, a player with a large enough velocity could have their ray trace collide with a solid block. Thankfully, however, I've already thought of this and fixed it. So far, as far as I know, phasing is physically impossible to do in my anti-cheat. Also, as a reminder, my unique faction server will be releasing its next map soon, so if you're interested, make sure you join my Discord server, the link will be down in the description. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or if you want to see more videos pertaining to my anti-cheat, let me know in the comment section. Lastly, if you're wanting to test my anti-cheat, message me on Discord, because I have a test server for that, and anyone cheating on my main faction server will be banned.